Good evening, you're watching Just the News. I'm Amitabh Balachandra. We're going to start off with the most important story uh, that we must report. It's on heat waves in India. Uh, from the national capital, Delhi to Maharashtra, India is reporting temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius in most parts of the country. We'll start off with Delhi. Now, the, in the next 20, uh, 48, I beg your pardon, 48 to 72 hours, the IMD has said that the national capital will see the temperature crossing the 40 degree mark. The current forecast says that Delhi will experience extreme heat waves with temperatures hovering between 42 to 44 degrees Celsius. Now, a heat wave alert uh, is issued by the IMD when mercury crosses 40 degrees in plains, 37 degrees in coastal areas and 35 degrees Celsius in hilly regions. Another factor in, uh, in case a region experiences a temperature which is 4 to 5 degrees above normal, that is also considered a situation um, that uh, can be said uh, that there is a heat wave alert. Meanwhile, in West Bengal, there was an emergency uh, meeting that was conducted by the Chief Minister of West Bengal. The government today has decided that all schools in the state private and government will go on summer vacations from the 2nd of May. IMD has in the meantime issued a heatwave warning over several districts of West Bengal from the 25th to 28th of April. In Maharashtra, uh, there are two regions, Vidarbha and Maradhwada, experiencing scorching temperatures and they are the worst hit regions for heatwave. Latest analysis of temperatures across India show that Vidarbha has been the hottest region in the country this year. In the last 60 days, Maharashtra has witnessed four spells of severe heat wave. In Bihar, in the meantime, uh, the Patna Meteorological Centre has maintained a yellow alert for heat wave in several districts in south as well as north parts of uh, the state of Bihar till Friday. Apart from this, heat wave conditions have also been reported in Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, and Gujarat. Moving away from the story now on to COVID, Prime Minister Modi has chaired a COVID review meet and these are the main takeaways. He has said that administering COVID, uh, vaccine to every eligible child at the earliest is the current priority. While stressing the need to ensure COVID appropriate behavior is maintained in public places as well. He said, and I quote, despite managing the COVID crisis well as compared to other countries, we can see an uptick in cases in states now. We have to stay alert, end quote. He also urged all states to get safety audits of all hospitals done on a priority basis to prevent fire incidents, which have been increasing amid heat wave as well. Now, India has reported 2,927 new COVID cases and 32 deaths in the last 24 hours. Now, a list of states are also bringing in the mask mandate back and Kerala is the latest state to do that. Uh, it's reintroduced the mask mandate as there's been a surge in COVID cases. It's also announced that any violation would be punishable under the provisions of the Disaster Management Act and other relevant laws. Meanwhile, uh, the district magistrate of Dehradun, uh, Uttarakhand, has also directed authorities to fine 500 rupees for those who come without face masks in the city. Moving away from COVID right now, uh, in the same review meet that Prime Minister Modi conducted with uh, state chief ministers, he also hit out at opposition ruled states and urged them to reduce VAT on fuel. Now, Prime Minister Modi said that some states did not reduce VAT on petrol and diesel despite the excise duty cut by the centre last November and had done injustice to the people by not transferring the benefits of the move to them. He said, and I quote, Some states reduced taxes, but other states did not give any benefit. Many states such as Maharashtra, West Bengal, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Jharkhand, and Tamil Nadu, for some reason or the other, did not listen to the central government." End quote. Now, reacting to this, Maharashtra Chief Minister Udhav Thakri has said that the centre has been meting out stepmotherly treatment to the state when it comes to financial aid. Also in the news, uh, the civic body in Gujarat's Himatnagar has carried out an anti-encroachment drive today in the area where communal clashes took place during Ram Navmi celebrations. Now, this is what the police says. The police says that this 
uh, uh, the properties uh, demolished were not linked to any of the accused in the communal clashes that took place on the 10th of April. The chief municipal officer of uh, Himatnagar has said that this uh, is a routine anti-encroachment drive. But incidentally, it happens right after the communal clashes that took place on the 10th of April, where um, clashes broke out in Chaparia uh, during Ram Navmi processions, leading to stone pelting, rioting and arson that lasted for three to four hours. Some vehicles were also set on fire during this clash. Meanwhile, in Haridwar, the administration has imposed Section 144 of the CRPC within 5 km area of a village, wherein a Mahapanchayat by Hindu religious leaders was scheduled to take place today. Now, the prohibitory orders were imposed hours after the Supreme Court directed the Uttarakhand Chief Secretary to place on record the state's position that there will not be any untoward uh, situation or unacceptable statements during the event. Now, according to the Indian Express, one of the organizers of the event said that they will go ahead with the plan to reach the village, nevertheless. Moving on now, uh, some tragic news coming in from Tamil Nadu. At least 11 people, including three children, were killed in Tanjavur after an overhead high voltage cable came in contact with a temple chariot pulled during a procession. Now, the incident happened at 3 a.m. this morning. Five others were also injured and taken to the hospital. Now, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister has announced a 5 lakh rupee compensation each to the families of the deceased. Now, in an update to the Bible row that's taking place in the state of Karnataka, the state government has issued a notice to Clarence High School in Richardstown, East Bengaluru, to explain its decision to mandate teaching of the Bible. Now, the Minister has, uh, the Minister of Education has told in a press conference on Tuesday that the school's action is a violation of the Karnataka Education Act. Now, he said, and I quote, while issuing a no-objection certificate to either board schools, we insist that they stick to the provisions of the Act, end quote. Earlier, the principal speaking to ANI uh, of this particular school has also said, and I quote, we are aware that some people are upset about one of the policies of our school. We are a peace-loving and law-abiding school. We've consulted our advocates on this matter and we follow their advice. We won't break the law of the land. End quote. Now, while it awaits the school's response, the department has uh, directed all state block educational officers to monitor schools for religious teachings and issue notices. Also in the news, a case of rape has been filed against Malayalam film actor-producer Vijay Babu Nernakulam. Uh, a woman accused uh, him of raping her in April this year. Hours after this case was filed by uh, Kerala police, Vijay Babu defended himself and also revealed the survivor's name on Facebook. Now he said, and I quote, I would file a defamation case against the complainant. Let it be the beginning of a new Me Too. Let us start a new fight, end quote. Now, according to the News Minute, Vijay Babu has since been absconding. The police have issued a lookout notice for him and reports also say that searches uh, have begun outside Kerala. Now, Vijay Babu is charged under the Section 376, which is sexual assault, 506, which is criminal intimidation, and 323, which is voluntarily causing hurt of the Indian Penal Court. On to business news, uh, starting off with LIC IPO, which will open on the 4th of May 2022 and will be available for subscription till the 9th of May 2022. And this is according to the Indian Express, where uh, the price band will be 902 to 949 rupees per share. Now, the government aims to uh, raise around 21,000 crore rupees from the public issue by divesting a 3.5% stake in the insurance giant. Moving on now, Tata owned Air India has proposed to acquire Air Asia India and has sought the deal's approval from the Competition Commission of India. Now, Air Asia India is made, uh, majority owned by Tata Sons with a shareholding of 83.67%, and the remaining stake is with Air Asia Investment Limited, part of Malaysia's Air Asia Group. Now, Air India and Air, uh, uh, India Express were acquired by Talis Private Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of Tata Sons Private Limited last year. 
Also, a day after Elon Musk's Twitter takeover deal was confirmed, he has now explained in a fresh tweet on what exactly he means by free speech, a term that he has been he has used cons- uh, continuously while talking about the potentials of Twitter as a platform. Now, in this new tweet, he says, and I quote, I simply mean that which matches the law. I am against censorship that goes far beyond the law. If people want less free speech, they will ask government to pass laws to that effect. Therefore, going beyond the law is contrary to the will of the people. End quote. Now, Musk finalized a deal on Monday to buy Twitter for $44 billion, sticking to his offer of $54.20 per share. Moving on to international news, uh, According to Reuters, a court in military-ruled Myanmar has sentenced former leader Aung San Suu Kyi to five years in jail after finding her guilty of corruption. Now, Aung San Suu Kyi has been charged with at least 18 offences. She denies all of the accusations and rights groups have condemned the court trials as a sham. Now, Ms. Suu Kyi has been under house arrest since February 2021 when a military coup ousted her elected government. Now, today, a Janta court found her guilty of taking a $600,000 bribe in the form of cash and gold bars from the former head of Yangon, Myanmar's largest city and region. Meanwhile, it's day 63 of Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Russia's energy firm Gazprom has told Poland and Bulgaria that it will stop supplying gas to the two countries over the country's refusal to pay for supplies in rubles. Now, it comes after Russian president demanded unfriendly countries to pay Gazprom in rubles instead of other currencies after sanctions were levied against Russia. Now, the EU has accused Russia of using energy to try and blackmail countries supporting Ukraine. In the meantime, airstrikes have hit regions in Ukraine, Russia and Moldova in the last 24 hours. Moripol's mayor has said that Russian forces are continuing the attack on uh, the steel plant in Moripol, the last Ukrainian stronghold in the city. Meanwhile, in Sri Lanka, which is crisis hit at this point, uh, an announcement has come in uh, on Tuesday that it would sell long-term visas to attract desperately needed foreign currency after the island nation ran out of dollars to pay even for food and fuel. Uh, The government has said that foreigners who deposit a minimum of $100,000 locally will be granted permission to live and work in Sri Lanka for 10 years under the Golden Paradise Visa program. Now, people have taken to the streets demanding the president's resignation uh, over the economic crisis that's hit the country. One piece of good news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin, SpaceX Crew 4 astronaut mission for NASA has launched successfully uh, atop the Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now, one of the astronauts includes mission specialist uh, Jessica Watkins, uh, who will become the first African-American woman to join a long-duration mission aboard the ISS. Now, only seven other black astronauts have boarded the space station since its inception. Uh, over 20 years ago. Now, the mission is part of NASA's commercial crew program and the fifth SpaceX flight to carry NASA astronauts, including the Demo 2 test flight to the space station in 2020. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.